Hey y'all, it truly is Christmas morning. And though um, <clears throat> most of everything, all these readings have been pre-recorded, um, it started out about four days ahead and the closer it got, the closer together, um, they became to the actual day. Hey, Merry Christmas morning, huh? Yeah! The day Christ arrived on planet Earth. <laughs> All right, y'all. As you can tell, it is actually morning. <laughs> Let's go get uh, stay started. Let's go get into in the manger. Let's get to in the manger. It's Christmas morning. Day 25. Now, look, guys. I mean, ain't this how we start Christmas morning? Straight out of bed. To see a glimpse of his majesty. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 16. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. It is amazing that we can live next to something for a lifetime. But unless we take time to focus on it, it doesn't become part of our life. Think about it. One can live near a garden and fail to focus on the splendor of the flowers. A man can spend a lifetime with a woman and never pause to look in her soul. And a person can be all that goodness calls him to be and still never see the author of life. Being honest and moral or even religious doesn't necessarily mean we will see him. No, we may see what others see in him or we may hear what some say he said. But until we see him for ourselves, until our own sight is given, we may think we see him, having in reality seen only a hazy form in the gray semi-darkness. Have you seen him? Have you caught a glimpse of his majesty? A word is placed in a receptive crevice of your heart that causes you ever so briefly to see his face. You hear a verse read in a tone you'd never heard or explained in a way you'd never thought. And one more piece of the puzzle falls into place. Someone touches your painful spirit as only one sent from him could do. And there he is. Jesus, the man, the bronze Galilean, who spoke with such thunderous authority and loved with such childlike humility. The God, the one who claimed to be older than time and greater than death. Gone is the pomp of religion. Dispersed is the fog of theology. Momentarily lifted in the opaque curtains of the controversy and opinion. Erased are our own blinding errors and egotism. And there he stands. Jesus. Have you seen him? Those who first did were never the same. My Lord and my God, cried Thomas. I have seen the Lord, exclaimed Mary Magdalene. We have seen his glory, declared John. 
But Peter said it best. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. His majesty, the emperor of Judah, the soaring eagle of eternity, the noble admiral of the kingdom. All the splendor of heaven revealed in a human body. For a period ever so brief, the doors of the throne room were open and God came near. His majesty was seen. Heaven touched the earth. And as a result, earth can now know heaven. An astounding tandem of human body housed divinity, holiness, and earthliness intertwined. This is no run-of-the-mill Messiah. His story was extraordinary. He called himself divine, yet allowed a Roman soldier to drive a nail into his wrist. He sent men into all the world, yet equipped them with only bended knees and memories of a resurrected carpenter. We can't regard him as simply a good teacher. He claims, his claims are too outrageous to limit him to the company of Socrates or Aristotle. Nor can we categorize him as one of many prophets sent to reveal eternal truths. His own claims eliminate that possibility. Let's find out. Let's follow his sandal prints. Let's sit on the cold, hard floor of the cave in which he was born. Let's smell the sawdust of the carpentry shop. Let's hear his sandals slap on the hard trails of Galilee. Let's sigh as we touched the healed sores of the leper. Let's smile as we see his compassion with the woman at the well. Let's let our voices soar with the praises of the multitudes. Let's try to see him. One morning, something happens to a person who has witnessed his majesty. He becomes addicted. One glimpse of the king and you are surrounded by a desire to see more of him and say more about him. Pew warming is no longer an option. Junk religion will no longer suffice. Sensation seeking is needless. Once you have seen his face, you will forever long to see it again. My prayer for this book is that the divine surgeon has used it as a delicate surgical tool to restore sight, that blurriness will be focused, darkness dispersed, and that will Christ will emerge from a wavy figure walking out in the desert image to become the touchable face of a best friend. That we will lay our faces at the pierced feet and join Thomas in proclaiming my Lord and my God. And most supremely, that we will whisper the secret of the universe. We were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Heavenly Father, restore my spiritual sight to 2020. That I might see your son as he truly is. And that I might know him. For all that he is. May I proclaim him. My Lord and my God. Just as truly as Thomas did. Help me. To see more of him. Today. In Jesus name. Amen. <laughs> I truly hope that. You've had a great Christmas. That all the gifts. That have been given. Have brightened lives. And that uh, you've just been able to enjoy whatever it is you've, you've done, whether it be um, 
you know, having family over, gathering with friends, uh, you know, whatever. But the most important thing that I really do hope is that what you found that you've opened on Christmas morning is truly the greatest gifts we could ever have. First, being Christ within our hearts, you know, and uh, second, being like uh, the next best gift from him, our health and the health of those around you. Among, I should say, the most important gifts I hope you've given is the gift of hope and love that um, you've shared from your heart about Christ. Y'all have a wonderful day. Enjoy it. And um, yeah, I love you. God loves you more. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs>